Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, please subscribe. I'd really love that if you're returning. How you doing? So there might be a chance that we might all go grid down. Yeah. Why? Because the United States is at risk of running short of power. And it's because of big tech's electricity hungry data set centers and clean technology factories that proliferate around the country leaving utilities and regulators scrambling for credible plans to upgrade the entire grid. In certain states, okay, let's take Georgia, demand for industrial power is surging to record highs with the projection of new electricity use for the next decade, now 17 times higher what it was only recently. Arizona, Public service, which is the largest utility in that state, is struggling to keep up, projecting it will be out of transmission capacity before the end of the decade, absent major upgrades. Northern Virginia, the equivalent of several new large nuclear power plants are needed to serve all the new data centers that are planned and under construction. Texas where electricity shortages are already routine on hot summer days, they face the same dilemma. The soaring demand is forcing electricity providers to scramble to try to squeeze more juice out of America's aging power grid while pushing commercial customers to go to extraordinary lengths to lock down their energy supply needs, such as by helping build their new power plants. So when you look at the numbers and you look at the situation as a whole, it is staggering and it is scary. It makes you scratch your head and wonder how we ended up in this situation. How did no one see this coming and prepare ahead for this? This has created a challenge like we've never seen before. And why wasn't this made a priority? especially with this administration or any administration. Even though this administration claims it has made easing the grid bottleneck a priority. Federal powers are limited and the whole process is politically fraught at best. Um, building new transmission lines and transferring stations involve huge land acquisitions, exhaustive um, environmental reviews, negotiations with multiple partners to determine who pays what costs. Regulators are worried that we, the customer, residential ratepayers, will be stuck with the bill for costly upgrades. A major factor behind the skyrocketing demand is the rapid innovation in AI, which is driving the construction of large warehouses of computing infrastructure that require exponentially more power and traditional uh, than, than the traditional data centers. Elon Musk has even warned that the U.S. will run out of electricity and transformers for AI by 2025. So tech giants are exploring ways in which AI can help make the grid operate more efficiently, such as by developing platforms that during times of peak power demand can shift compute tasks and their associated energy consumption to the times and places where carbon free energy is available on the grid. And that is according to Google. With all of this being said, prepare for a grid down for at least two weeks. That's two weeks without refrigerated food, and in most places, two weeks without water, as most modern plumbing systems need electricity to operate anyway. 
So the question is, do you know how to survive if the power grid goes down? Now, for most Americans, the answer is no. However, power outage survival is a real concern and it is a real life scenario. So there are some essentials that you will want to make sure that you have with you in the event of a long-term power outage. Now, of course, you're going to have food, water, stuff like that. Um, when it comes to water, they say one gallon per person per day, but I say four gallons per person per day. Now, Unless you have well water, you're probably on a water system that needs electricity to operate. And a power outage at the water treatment or processing plant means that you will lose access to the most basic necessity of life, which is water. This means please start storing water as well as planning for the contingency that the water supply as you know it is never coming back food. People in dire straits with food often come up with rather creative solutions about how they can feed themselves in a disaster. And then all of a sudden, that can of water chestnuts that you've had in the cupboard for the past couple of months starts to look really delicious. But all kidding aside, preparing for a food shortage or an interruption in the food supply chain is something that you should be preparing for. And there are a number of ways that this might happen, but if the power grid gets knocked out, you can bet your bottom dollar that the food is not going to be coming for a while. The stock that's already on the shelves in the supermarket is going to dry up instantly as soon as word spreads. And what's more is, are you even going to have cash on hand because banks aren't going to work, ATMs are not going to work, credit cards are not going to work, debit cards are not going to work, can't even write a check anymore, okay? So anytime meat and dairy goes above 40 degrees Fahrenheit for more than two hours, chuck it, okay? Uh, freezers are great because the food will stay good for about two days and then you could start you know, use that time to start cooking the food in advance. I mean, sure, the cooked food might eventually go bad, but it's going to have a much longer shelf life than the uncooked food getting warm in the freezer. So the next thing is light. While not quite as pressing for our, your survival as food and water is, not having light can be a nuisance at best. Imagine stubbing your toe. <laughs> And, you know, it, then it ends up being broken or something, you know, and it's because you didn't <laughs> remember that that damn table leg was there. Some sort of light is a must. So get yourself some batteries or maybe even some candles and keep them on hand. Communication during a power outage is extremely important. You will need to be able to collect your family members who are not anywhere nearby. And at the same time, you wanna be able to communicate with your family members who are on the other side of the country or even on the other side of the world. So here is what you need to know. The FCC requires that all cell phone towers have a four hour battery backup. And that means that they are not going to withstand a prolonged outage due to hackers. So your electric devices, will continue to function properly, provided that you have an alternative power source. Beyond that, your cell phone is going to work for at least four hours after the power grid goes down, so use your time wisely when communication gets knocked out. Next, carbon monoxide. You might have carbon monoxide detectors in your home, but chances are you've never taken the subject very seriously you probably worry about other unlikely disasters like fires and burglars. But if there's a power outage, not only are you going to have no detectors to let you know about a leak, you're also going to be living in a world where a leak is far more likely. So first, let's talk to common sense, okay? 
unless a fireplace, not in a good place for starting fire indoors. Please don't. Okay. All indoor fires should be in a fireplace uh, and all open fire cooking should be done outside. Okay. If you're using a generators, do not put it in any enclosed spaces like your garage because it can easily leak into the house. Common sense. Okay. And being aware that you don't have any detectors are basically all that you can do to prevent carbon dioxide poisoning when the power goes out. Next, let's talk about when the power grids could possibly go out. So let's talk about summer. The summer offers unique challenges for those without power. For example, extreme heat warnings are not only put out there for little ones, the elderly, and our pets because they like to hear themselves talk. <laughs> uh, they do it because extreme heat is very dangerous. We've already covered water, which is absolutely essential. When it comes to extreme heat, you need to stay cool and stay hydrated. An increased need for hydration means that your water supply is going to go faster. You want to drink at least a gallon of water every day, or basically your entire allotted of supply of water for the day. You should also try to stay cool by opening up windows on breezy days, wearing light colored clothing, and working during cooler hours when possible. Cold showers can be a great way to stay cool if the water supply is still working. Watch for any symptoms, okay? Uh, nausea, weakness, dizziness, confusion, hot or dry skin. And remember that alcoholic and caffeinated drinks actually dehydrate you in the long run. So avoid those on hot days. Next, let's talk about winter. The biggest problem that we will encounter in the winter is the exact opposite. How are you going to stay warm? Your power supply might be cut off along with your electricity. So you should have some kind of like a old fashioned off grid fuel source to keep you warm. And as I stated earlier, copper monoxide poisoning is an issue. So keep those precautions in mind and the clothing recommendations, uh, reverse, right? Dark colors, heavy clothes to keep you warm. Layering is your friend. Uh, everyone sleep in the same room to help keep heated up for the compound of body heat. Investing in sleeping bags, specifically in winter camping, can help you and your family keep warm when the power goes out. Mm -hmm. Just as in summer, you need to be worried about certain symptoms, okay? And those symptoms <clears throat> are numbness in the extremities, stumbling, excessive shivering, lowered slowed heart rate lethargy confusion delirium anytime you or your family member begins suffering from any of these symptoms please get warm fast so finally you should be taking measures to protect yourself and your family from the human element in the event that a power grid does happen you know and it goes down the most dangerous animal is man and those who have failed to prepare are certainly going to be coming after those who are ready for survival. Having arms on hand can mean the difference between you and your family surviving, even in the event of a temporary power outage. So please stock up. And the main thing is that you know how to survive if the power grid goes down. The more people who keep food and water on hand, the more likely it is that society will remain intact in the event of a power outage or any other sort of disruptive event. Educate your neighbors on this matter to ensure your family and your community are able to weather the storm. Okay. All right, guys, I am out of here. I will see you in the next one. You stay safe. You stay positive. You keep prepping. And as always, fearless. Ciao.